Kia ora Year 12 and 13. This is the first video for our new topic, which is conics. Um, this is going to be a video that looks at circles, and I'm going to look at the three different ways that we can write the equation of a circle. So when we first learn about circles, well, we, the circle is probably the first shape we recognised, right? So it's this round thing. But this year, we're going to think about a circle as being a locus of points, right? So a circle is all the points that satisfy the condition that they are a fixed distance r away from the centre of the circle. So think about taking a piece of string of length r, holding it out tight and dragging it around. Now what shape would we get? Well, we'd get this thing there here, right? A very beautiful professional looking circle. So when the circle has got a centre at 0, 0, we can write x squared plus y squared equals r squared, and that just comes from Pythagoras. Okay, so we went over that in class, not going to talk about that anymore now. That's when the centre is here. But we are much more interested in circles that can be absolutely anywhere in the Cartesian plane. So let's look at this lovely blue circle that's already here. It's been moved away from having the origin as its centre, and its new centre is at A and B. So everything we learnt in level 2 graphing works here as well, and we can write the equation of this circle as x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared. Now this is a really nice way to see the centre and the radius of a circle easily. So that is factorised form. There are two other ways to write the equation for a circle. I'm going to do those on a new slide. Alright, so if we start with our expanded, sorry, our factorised form, which lets me read off the centre and the radius very easily, we can expand the left-hand side and get this. Now if I collect up terms so that we get something equaling 0, I'll get x squared plus y squared minus 2ax minus 2by plus a squared plus b squared minus r squared. In other words, sometimes I'm going to have an equation that has got, that might look like this, so x squared plus y squared minus 6x plus 10y plus 17 equals 0. One of the things we're going to look at doing is how to go from this expanded form back to the, the factorised form. So that's quite useful because when I see the expanded form, obviously I can't just read off the centre and the radius, which is what I often want to do. Now the third form is parametric form and that's coming up on the next slide. Right, so remember when we did our favourite, everyone's favourite subject, which was trig, we did lots and lots of work with circles, and we learned that if we had an angle in here, we got this equation, x is equal to r cos theta, and y is equal to r sine theta. Right, that just comes out of my basic trig ratio definitions. So if we've got a centred at 0, 0 circle, we can write x equals r cos t. Now we usually use t for our parameter, not theta, but it doesn't really matter. So that's fine, but we want to be able to write a parametric equation for a circle centred at a, b. So what's happened to the x coordinate? It's just been shoved out a unit. So x is equal to a plus r cos theta, cos t, which would obviously be sine there, and y is equal to b plus r sine t, because everything's been moved up by b units. So that's the third form, that's parametric form. We want to be able to switch 
around between the three forms. So coming up finally are some examples. Right, so a circle, circle has got this equation. What is its centre and its radius? So we need to get that into factorised form. And to do that, we are going to use the technique of completing the square. So let's take a look at what we've got here. Well, we'll first focus on the x's. So we're going to have x minus 3 squared. Now, that matches up with the x squared and the minus 6x, but I've accidentally added in 9, negative 3 squared, so I need to take that out. Same thing for the y part, y plus 2 squared. So that's this bit here, but I've added in 4, so I need to take 4 out. And then I've just got my plus 4 from here. So cleaning that up, we get x minus 3 squared plus y plus 2 squared equals 9. So the centre is at 3, negative 2, and the radius is the square root of 9, which is 3. Right, so the circle looks like this. Right, I'm sorry, I'm doing this at home in a hurry, so there's no lovely geogebra pictures today. Um, the second thing we need to figure out is does the point 54 lie on the circumference? So to do this, we want to substitute 54 into either of those equations, but I'd suggest factorised is easier, and we just want to see what we get. So let's substituting into the left hand side. So 5 minus 3 squared plus 4 plus 2 squared is equal to 2 squared, so 4 plus 36, which is equal to 40. So no, it does not lie on the circumference. And moreover, we can see how far it is from the centre is greater than 9. So that's telling me that it lies outside of the circle, not inside. Right, next question. Slightly harder, but not too bad. And again, GeoGebra would be lovely here, but I'll just draw a very rough picture. So we've got two points, P and Q. Um, P is at 4, negative 2, so it's about here. And Q is at 6 and 8, so that's way up there. They form a diameter of a circle. So we need to find the centre and the radius of the circle. So O will be at the midpoint for the centre, okay, um, and the midpoint will be 4 plus 6 over 2, and negative 2 plus 8 over 2, so all those good skills you learnt in coordinate geometry last year will come in handy, so the centre is at 5 and 3, now we need to figure out the radius, right, two ways to do this, first way is that now that we've got the centre, we can just work out the distance between two points. So I'll do the distance from O to Q. So using Pythagoras, it's going to be 6 minus 5 squared plus 8 minus 3 squared, which is equal to the square root of 1 plus 25, which is root 26. So the radius is equal to the square root of 26. Now on the next slide we're going to write that equation in all three ways. The easiest one is going to be in factorised form because I've got the centre and I've got the radius. Right, so O equals 5, 3, R equals root 26. So we can very quickly write down the equation. X minus 5 squared plus Y minus 3 squared is equal to the radius squared, which is 26. So that's factorised form. In expanded form, what do we have? Well, we'll expand that out and we get x squared minus 10x plus 25 plus y squared minus 6y plus 9 equals 26. x squared plus y squared minus 10x minus 6y. And then I've got plus 25 and 9 here, so I've got... Um, 34, take away 26, leaves me with a plus 8 equals 0. So that is in expanded form. Now the last thing I need to do is put it into Cartesian form, which is very easy when we have the centre and the radius. x is equal to a 
5 plus root 26 cos t and y is equal to 3 plus root 26 sine t. Right, just remembering where's that coming from with the cos and the sine? Well, there's t, that's my angle, and x here is the adjacent, so it's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Right, so that's that one. Now the last question in there was to find the x-intercepts. Okay, so we've got our circle centred at 5, 3. And the radius is just a little bit bigger than 5. So it'll look something like this. Now this is where having a nice graph would have made this much better, but never mind. So we're looking for the x-intercepts, and there are going to be two of them. So how can we do that? Well, the x-intercepts are where y equals 0. So I just need to substitute in y equals 0. And this is where I would probably, in fact I would definitely use the expanded form. So the expanded form is x squared minus 10x plus y squared minus 6y plus 8 equals 0. We're looking for the points on that locus where y is 0. So x squared minus 10x plus 8 equals 0. Now, I know you probably look at that and you want to race away and do quadratic formula on it. And you can. In fact, it's fine here to just shove that into your graphics calculator because you'll just ask for the two x values. But I want to make sure that you all know how to use completing the square to solve equations like this as well. So we're, we're going to do that and then we're going to see how we get, of course, the same as we do with the quadratic formula. So if I do completing the square on this, I get x squared sorry, x minus 5 squared. Now I've added in 25, so I'm going to take out 25 to, to keep it balanced, so that way I haven't changed the equation. Now I've got x minus 5 squared is equal to 17. Right, I need a new slide, so that's coming now. Okay, so x minus 5 squared is equal to 17. x minus 5 is equal to plus or minus root 17. So x is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of 17. So my x-intercepts are either x equals 5 plus root 17 or x equals 5 minus root 17. So I haven't done that on my calculator because my calculator is sitting at school, but it's equal, it'll be equal to 9 point something 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 and this one will be equal to 0 point something something something. Let's have a look at the quadratic formula, and you'll see that we're going to get exactly the same answer. So x squared minus 10x plus 8 equals 0. Um, x is equal to negative b, so 10 plus or minus root b squared, 100, minus 4 times 1 times 8, divided by 2. So x is equal to 10 over 2 plus or minus 1 half times the square root of 68, which is 5 plus or minus 1 half times 2 root 17. Right, so we get to the same point, but um, in a much more annoying kind of way. So once you get confident with completing the square, it has its uses in different places. Okay, that is not a short video in the end, sorry about that. Um, thanks for watching and uh, make sure you do the New Lake questions on circles and also Delta chapter 37.1, um, especially some of the harder ones near the end if you want a bit more challenge. Thanks for watching.